Let's now go through and evaluate four different types of computer, handheld, portable, fixed, and shared. So handheld devices, as the name would suggest when you think about it, are devices which can be operated, can be used using only one hand. So you should be able to use it with only one hand is the idea. So things like smartphones, tablets, although, well, tablets, if it's a small tablet like an iPad mini, that would be fine. A bigger tablet like an iPad Pro is maybe not handheld. But something like a Kindle, a ebook reader, could be handheld. Likewise, a smartwatch is a handheld device. So one hand, the idea being that they can be used in a range of scenarios. You can sit down and use an ebook reader. You could stand and check your phone. You could walk and check your smartwatch. They can be used on the go, is the idea. They're really portable. And often, they're going to have a, a touchscreen. Nowadays, we don't really have many devices with no touchscreen. And crucially, there'll be a long battery. To be able to use them out and about, it's got to have a battery which will last a while. Now, just a warning about answering questions on handheld devices. Make sure you don't use brand names in your exam. So if you were asked to give an example of a handheld device, don't say something like an iPhone, say smartphone. Don't say Apple Watch, say smartwatch, etc. So avoid the company names is a tip. Now, in terms of evaluation, which is really important in exams, as you know. Well, handheld devices are small and light, which is good because they're very easy to carry around. Because they have a battery, they don't need to be plugged in, so you can use them when you are outside of your home. And also, because they are so small, there's not really space to fit in a fan, like, say, a desktop computer would have, so they are generally quite quiet, often making no noise, because there is no fan to cool them down. But battery life can be short and mainly last a few hours in certain devices and partly because of the battery and also because of no fan, they're generally not very powerful compared to bigger devices. If you have a powerful device, it takes up a lot of power and also generates a lot of heat. And so without a fan and to maximize battery life, usually they're not nearly as powerful as other devices. And finally, because they are small, it's relatively easy for you to lose and also have stolen, right? You might leave a phone on a train. You might have a, a smartwatch stolen from a, a gym locker, something like that, right? Because they are small and very portable, they can get left and taken. Now, the next category of device is very, very similar. So be careful not to mix them up. We have portable devices, which can also be easily moved around, but you can't really use these with one hand. So you can hold it and have it on a lap, for example, but you need to have two hands to be able to use them. So a laptop is a portable device, not a handheld device. A large tablet, again, is a portable device and not a handheld device because you can't deal with it with only one hand. And again, important to point out, these are battery powered. You've got to plug them in to charge them, either with a wire or nowadays wireless charging, but the battery is what powers it most of the time. And so we're often moving these around, but there are also not just portable computers. We also have portable storage devices. So something like a USB memory stick is a portable storage device. They can get taken between computers. Now, that you can use with one hand, but you'd call that portable, not handheld, because it's not really a computer. Just on those memory sticks, because this can be a common thing to see in mark schemes and also a common exam question because devices like memory sticks are easy to remove and easy to take around they are fairly vulnerable to something like corruption if not ejected properly so because you've got a usb stick plugged into your computer if you just sort of yank it out or if you take it out while it's doing something that might lead to corruption on the usb memory stick right it might not store the files properly, you might find that actually your files are not openable, they might not work anymore because you have taken it out too hastily. So I guess my point is, if you've got portable storage devices, you have got to be careful because there is more risk of damage, but also corruption. So the idea is if you eject it properly, you are safely removing it, you are telling the computer you're gonna take it out, that's less chance of it breaking. But that only really applies to portable storage devices, Portable computers, like tablets and laptops, you've got to be careful because they are easy to break if you are moving around and not protecting it. 
but they don't need to be ejected because they're not really connected to another computer. Okay, now in terms of evaluation, so portable devices are quite small and light, not as small and light as handheld devices. So they are easier to carry around, but maybe this time more in a bag, in a case, for instance. Again, don't need to be plugged in, they've got a battery, and more so than handheld devices, often these can be upgraded. You can maybe add more RAM to a laptop to make it perform better. You might be able to add more storage space more easily in something like a tablet than say in a smartphone. So because they're bigger, there's more room to upgrade. And cons are very similar. So battery life can again be short, especially because these tend to be more powerful than handheld, which takes up more battery um, space or um, uses up battery quicker. But they're still as powerful than bigger devices like a desktop computer, although they tend to be more powerful than a handheld device, like I said. And finally, these are again easy to have stolen because they're not fixed. Anyone could just take it out of a bag, for example. I wouldn't say easy to lose. You know, it's hard to forget a laptop, say, but that could still be the case. Moving now on to fixed devices, which are designed to stay and be used in one place. So they're not meant to be portable, like portable devices and handheld devices are. So a great example is a desktop computer. People, I find, often call this a laptop. So a laptop is where you've got it sat on your lap and you've got the keyboard and screen and mouse in one unit. This is a desktop, it goes on top of a desk and stays there in a fixed location. Now, you've often got to plug in things like a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, but the actual desktop is this tower. Um, another example of a fixed device might be a smart TV. A smart TV is a computer, which of course is meant to show you television and apps and so on that stays in one place. Likewise, a games console stays in one place. You can move it around, of course, and you can move around all of these, but they're meant to stay in one place when you are using it. So usually, they need to be plugged in to work. I mean, that's nine times out of 10 because they usually have no battery. So you've got to keep it plugged in. It won't work without that. Now, these are usually more powerful than, say, portable and handheld devices. Not always, of course. You can get a rubbish desktop computer but generally they're more powerful and more easy to upgrade, partly because you've got more space, it's a bigger unit, you can upgrade it, but also the manufacturers often just make it easier for you to upgrade, add in a new hard drive, add in a new bit of RAM, add in a new CPU, it's easier in something like a desktop computer, maybe not so much with something like a smart TV, because there's not really a need to upgrade it, but a desktop is definitely more upgradable. And usually there'll be a fan built in, maybe not in a TV, but in a desktop for instance, and the fan will cool down the computer. That can be loud, which could be a downside. You might be able to hear my computer making noises right now because it's got a fan. But ultimately, if it can cool itself down, it means you can be more powerful because the more powerful it is, the more heat is produced. If it cools itself down, it means you can be powerful. If there was no fan, it caps how powerful you can make the CPU. But because it needs a constant power source, it means you can't take it around, you've got to have it plugged in. If you have a power cut, the computer will turn off. And generally they're larger and so harder to transport. You can transport it, of course. If you move house, you can move the computer and TV, but it's a pain. I've done that recently and it's annoying and difficult. And often, especially thinking about desktops, there needs to be peripherals. A peripheral is a device plugged in to a computer, something like a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. You've got to get those and use them. Whereas something like a tablet and a laptop have all you need built in, generally speaking. The final category are shared devices, which are designed to be accessed by multiple users, often at the same time. So a fixed device has got one user at a single time, a shared device doesn't. So the best example are the servers you might have in a data center. So a server is a powerful computer which performs a job and provides services to clients. And often data centers are used to provide something like cloud storage, a data center is where you have a big group of servers running together to provide a service like cloud storage, where you can log in to something like iCloud or OneDrive and access your files remotely. Now these are often the most powerful devices because they're so big and can have so many storage devices and CPUs working at once. And they're designed to be accessed by many users at once, which can be really efficient. You might as a company buy a few servers and run those instead of having lots and lots and lots of powerful computers for all of your employees. And usually they're left on all the time, 24 seven, all year. And so 
they are available whenever you need. As long as you have a network connection. So a key limitation is you've got to access something like a data center via a network and so you need to be plugged in, have internet at all times. Now because they are kind of a step up from standard computers, they are expensive and difficult to set up. If you were a company launching a brand new data center, that's a lot of work to get it up and running and a lot of cost as well. And because they're usually on 24 seven and are so powerful, it requires a lot of power and cooling. You might have seen videos of data centers and they're very loud. You can hear the fans going at all times. It's got a lot of power being used, a lot of cooling being used because they are so powerful, which again adds a cost and makes things harder to set up. 